Well, hello students and welcome to BUOL 490 Career and Faith. My name is Jake Bronk and I will serve as your professor for Career and Faith as we uh, journey through the study of the integration of our faith and our careers over the course of the next eight weeks in this first by-term of the semester. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about an overview of this course, what it's about, where we're headed, and some general policies and an understanding of generally what to expect as we uh, journey through our studies. This course is about how we integrate our faith with our professional career. We don't cease to be who we are when we become a professional. And we also do not cease to hold moral, ethical, and religious convictions when we become a professional or a business leader. Our faith forms the basis of who we are and how we view and understand the world around us. We can no more divorce ourselves from that when we become a business leader uh, than we can divorce ourselves from an understanding of who we are and of the world that we live in. That's fundamental to how we view and operate uh, in this world. We encounter many different people from many different backgrounds and professional settings. Now, some of uh, the professional folks that we will encounter may hold similar views to uh, the ones that we hold, and then others of them may hold significantly different views. As most, if not all of you are aware, that can pose a number of significant challenges in the workplace, uh, and it can uh, oftentimes create challenges for us personally in how we interact with others and our friendships and our family and in our professional life. And so because of that, there is a question of how we integrate our faith with our workplace. When we face these challenges, when we face the struggles of everyday life and work and at home, how do we deal with these things? Well, we're going to consider that very question and a number of subsidiary questions to it as we journey throughout this by-term together. Work is, first of all, a part of God's plan. It's part of his plan for humanity, and it's part of his plan for all of his creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, the Bible tells us, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. As evidenced in these early verses of the first chapter of the book of Genesis, work has been part of God's plan for humanity since the very creation of human beings, since the very earliest uh, part of the creation account and the very earliest part of the testimony of the scriptures, work has been a part of God's plan for his people and a part of his plan for creation. As we understand that, we're going to build upon that principle and that truth in looking at a number of subsidiary subject areas and a number of subsidiary concepts specific to the integration of faith with the business environment and business leadership. As we journey through that study, there are some course policies and, and an overview of the nature of this course that I want you to be aware of. Career and Faith will examine the integration of faith and work, and in doing so, we're going to explore various perspectives on work, uh, challenges inherent to work, and the opportunities available to us in the work that we do. This course is taught from a Christian faith perspective. Uh, as most, if not again all of you are aware, the University of the Cumberlands is a Christian institution, and uh, I, as your professor, am a Christian, and so we teach this course from a Christian faith perspective. While I recognize that all of you in the class may or may not be Christians, I want you to understand up front that I'm not going to penalize you uh, for lack of Christian faith, but you do need to recognize that this course is taught from a Christian faith perspective, and accordingly you will be integrating business concepts and these uh, ideas and challenges and opportunities we're going to look at with Christian teachings and uh, teachings from the Bible. We'll get to more information about the use of the Bible in the course here in a moment, but I want you to recognize the Christian faith element to this course up front. Uh, also, we will focus on the integration of both business and biblical and theological concepts. Now, many of you come from a business background. Others of you in the course may come from some other subject areas. Uh, I am a pastor, in full disclosure. I stated that in my introduction, and I provided some information for you concerning that. But at the same time, I also recognize that uh, many of you all may not have a, a 
a uh, very thorough biblical or theological background. And that's okay. That's part of my hope for this course is it will help to grow your understanding and your experience on that front. But by the same token, I don't want you to be intimidated by that or think that I'm going to penalize you because you haven't had uh, seminary courses or you haven't had a, a uh, religion or Christian ministries background. I don't expect that. But I do want you to recognize that we're going to take business concepts and we're going to examine those concepts in light of the teachings of Scripture and the textbooks and the instruction I'll provide for you throughout this course will help you to do that. In addition, I also want you to recognize that this course is reading and writing oriented. Now, I have tried to design the course where there's not a, a terribly heavy amount of writing. Uh, this is, is not a writing composition course, and so I'm not focused on volume so much as I am focused on the quality of your work, the quality of your reasoning, and your thought process as evidence in that work. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't need to take your writing seriously. You need to use appropriate grammar and spelling. This is a 400 level class, and so accordingly, I expect that you will uh, apply those skills and the knowledge you've learned in other courses throughout your educational journey. Uh, but uh, you also need to recognize that, that I'm not focusing so much on quantity as I am on the quality of your work uh, and of your reflection on the reading assignments. Uh, there are three required textbooks. Now, if you purchase your textbooks, you'll notice there are only two you have to buy. I'll get to that in just a second. The two you have to purchase are the Grudem textbook, which is Business for the Glory of God, the Bible's teaching on the moral goodness of business. Now, as you probably noticed, if you have that book in your possession, uh, it's a small book, both uh, in terms of its dimensions and in terms of the number of pages. Uh, it, it's not a very large book, but it is packed with a gold mine of information about the integration of faith and business. And so, again, hopefully, I know it looks like there's a lot of reading, but as you've looked at the textbooks, hopefully uh, you've come to realize that uh, there's not so much reading as it might seem at surface level, but what is there is very important and very consequential for your professional career and for a faith understanding of that career. Uh, the second textbook you need to purchase is the Keller and Alsdorf book, which is entitled Every Good Endeavor, Connecting Your Work to God's Work. This textbook is one of my favorite books, and I hope it will become one of yours as well. It examines, first of all, the biblical and theological basis for work as part of God's plan, how God has designed work, God's intention for work, and what he wanted it to be. But then the book also moves into an analysis of the problems with work. Uh, obviously, we recognize that there are problems with work. There are a whole lot of people across our country uh, and across this planet who go to work every day dreading what they do, feeling very frustrated and discouraged by their jobs, and feeling like they have no purpose other than just simply uh, making a living or, or uh, surviving until they get to the next weekend. Well, Weekends are a fine thing, and making a living is important, but that's not all there is to work. There's more than money. There's more than simply earning an income uh, that is part of God's plan for our career and for our profession. And this book helps to examine those challenges and how, through our faith and through our understanding of God's intention for work, we can rediscover the joys and the blessings that are available in our professional careers and in what he has called us to do and what we've been available, what we're able to do. And then the third textbook, which you probably will not have to purchase, is a copy of the Holy Bible, both Old and New Testaments. Now, that is the Christian Holy Bible. There's some ambiguity when you say a Bible. Uh, that can mean a number of different things. When I refer to the Bible, I refer to the Christian Bible, the 66 books composing both the Old and New Testaments of the Holy Scriptures. And a little bit of information about the Bible here. If you do not have a print version of a Christian Bible... You can find one for free at BibleGateway.com. The link you'll see on the screen here. In addition, I'll upload a copy of this PowerPoint uh, without my voiceover for your use, and you can click the hyperlink through that. And uh, this provides a free online version, not just of one Bible, but of multiple versions of the Bible that's available for your use and for your examination. Uh, again, if you have possession of a study Bible or a printed copy of the Bible, you're certainly welcome to use that. But if you don't have possession of that, you can find one for free online at this website. And again, multiple versions available there. And speaking of versions of the Bible, you will notice in the syllabus I did not state a required version of the Bible. And that is because you are welcome to use whatever version you're familiar with and comfortable with. Now, 
If you do not have a preference with regard to that, or you do not have familiarity with the Bible, perhaps you've never really read much of the Bible, you're not familiar with it, I have suggested on the screen before you several versions, and these are not required. Uh, you are not required to pick any of these, but these are suggestive versions uh, that are easy to read, easy to access. All of them are available at BibleGateway.com. And so, uh, again, these are suggestions that you can use. The first is the Holman Christian Standard Bible, a recent update to which has been, or a recent update to this, rather, has been uh, named the Christian Standard Bible. So it's HCSB or CSB. Um, in addition, there is the English Standard Version, the New International Version, the King James Version, which is the most widely read version of the Bible, as well as the New King James Version, which is a more contemporary update uh, to the traditional King James Version the New American Standard Bible, and the New Living Translation. All of these are suggested biblical versions that you can use for the class, but again, uh, none of these are required. What is required is that you have access and that you use a copy of the Christian Holy Bible, both Old and New Testaments. Some general course expectations that you need to be familiar with. First of all, be respectful of the views and the convictions of others. Uh, feel free to discuss, to analyze, and to debate in your assignments and your discussion boards and within the context of our class. But always do so in a spirit of respect and appreciation for the learning and the knowledge provided by others in the course. Uh, it's likely that as we journey through this class, you may come across somebody else's ideas or postings that you disagree with. Perhaps you may disagree with my own. That's certainly your right, and, and that's within the boundaries of the course to do so. But when you express disagreement, do so in a spirit of respect and appreciation for the views of others, even if you disagree with those views. This should go without saying in a 400 level class, but do not plagiarize in your work in this class. That means do not copy and paste portions of the textbook or portions of what someone else has said out there on the internet in a published journal article, in somebody's blog. Do not present their work as your own work. If you use the thoughts of somebody else either by paraphrasing those thoughts or by directly quoting that source, you need to attribute that source by citing it in APA style. APA style is the required style guide for this course. Uh, I have provided some links that give you background information on APA style in the information tab. Uh, and then in your specific course assignments, I have given you a general guide to how you need to approach APA citations. Uh, again, if you use the thoughts or the ideas, the work of someone else, that's fine, but be sure that you cite it. If you use somebody else's work and present it as your own without a citation, that is not okay. That is plagiarism, and the penalties that are prescribed in the syllabus will be enforced with regard to plagiarism. Pay attention to the specific assignment requirements as given in the unit folders as well. You'll notice as you go to unit one for each of the required assignments, which I'll go over here in just a moment, there is specific information given for that assignment, what's required both in general terms and the specific requirements with regard to the formatting of the assignment given in that folder. Be sure that you read and review that carefully before you submit your assignment. And then I also want to encourage you to ask questions if you have them. Uh, there is no such thing as a stupid question. The only stupid question is one that doesn't get asked. I'm a believer in that. I do ask that you keep your questions uh, relevant to the course itself. However, uh, if you have more of a general question, I'll be glad to answer that as well, as long as it's on a, a, a basis appropriate for a professor-student relationship. Uh, my contact information is available in the syllabus for you. I do want to say that while a number of means of contacting me are listed there, the two best ways to get a hold of me are through the use of email and my cell phone, which is provided in the syllabus. Email is overall the best way to get a hold of me. I have email on my phone, and so I check it frequently. Uh, if you send me an email, I will respond to you within 24 hours is my goal, 48 hours at the latest. If your question is on a more technical basis or it requires me to conduct some research before I get back to you, please be understanding in that it may take me a little bit longer uh, than I would ordinarily take in order to get back to you with that information. But at any rate, I will get back to you as soon as I can with the answer to your question. Uh, I also want to let you know that any discussion of specific grades in this course, uh, as in, uh, Professor Brock, you assigned me this grade, what was the basis for that, or, or I disagree with this grade, or, or 
can you clarify this, whatever the nature of that. Anything that is a discussion of a specific grade in this course must be conducted through iLearn course messages per the university policy. Now, I don't want to go into the background uh, as to why that is required. I just want you to know that is required. Specific grades that are discussed have to be discussed through the iLearn course message. I do, however, want to tell you that if you send me a course message in iLearn while I check that frequently, I don't check it as frequently as I do my email and some of the other means. So if you send me a course message, do me the favor of sending me an email in addition to that and say, hey, Professor Brock, I sent you a course message. Uh, just wanted to let you know or something to that effect, and then I will be sure to go in and check it. But be aware that that is a required policy also. And then finally, we come to an overview of your week one assignments. There are four assignments, graded assignments, that are required of you this week in addition to watching this video. Uh, the videos are not graded assignments, but you are encouraged to watch them. And in the future, you will have some assignments uh, or will likely have some assignments on the basis of videos as well as uh, on the basis of your readings. Primarily your readings, but I reserve the right to uh, require you to review a video as part of a future assignment. First thing that is required of you is the welcome discussion posting. I want you to introduce yourself to the class, tell me some interesting facts about yourself, your background, um, your major, what you're studying, what your future career plans are, anything of that nature that you're comfortable sharing with the class. Uh, please be sure to do, show, do so in that discussion posting by this Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. of the first week of class. I uh, want to remind you that the discussion posting is a requirement. It is graded, and it's worth 10 points of your final score. So uh, while it is a, a fairly light grade, the fact of the matter is if you don't do it, you will have a 10-point deduction. So keep that in mind. Uh, then your first regular assignment is the Discussion Forum 1 assignment. And in this week's Discussion Forum, you will be asked to discuss and analyze uh, the Keller and Alsdorf textbooks, Chapter 1 section on the design of work. Following that, you have Accomplish Assignment 1, which is discussion and analysis of Keller and Alsdorf's Chapter 2 on the dignity of work. And then finally, you have Reflection Assignment 1, which is to discuss and reflect upon Grudem's Chapter 1 on the subject of ownership in business and how God is glorified or should be glorified uh, through rightly understood ownership in business and of business entities. Again, specific information regarding these assignments is available in the assignment folders and in the Unit 1 folder in iLearn. Uh, further, if you need clarification or you have additional questions about the expectations on the assignments, please feel free to contact me. As a final note, I want you to know that on the uh, information tab in iLearn, you will also notice that there are some rubrics that are uploaded. There is a discussion rubric, an accomplished rubric, rubric excuse me, and a reflection rubric. Uh, those rubrics are blank examples of what you can expect to receive in terms of your grading feedback on a weekly basis. Uh, I grade using rubric systems and I'll have additional feedback I'll give you uh, as part of the rubric or from time to time outside of the rubric. But your grade will be calculated on the basis of what you see in those rubrics. A portion of it is uh, delegated to assignment completion. Some of it is about the thoroughness of, of your work. Uh, another dimension of it is the proper grammar and proper spelling. Again, in a 400 level class, that is expected of you. And then also whether or not you have used or how well you have used APA style in the completion of your assignment. Now, if it is an accomplish or a reflection assignment, I'm going to apply APA style requirements pretty strongly with that. I, I wouldn't consider myself uh, APA crazy, but I do expect you to use APA formatting. That means you need a cover page, you need APA headers, you need a reference page. Make sure that it is an APA style formatted assignment. For the discussion board, obviously there's some dimensions of APA style you can't use there. I don't expect you to have a cover page. I don't expect you uh, to have uh, some of the other formatting specifics that would normally apply in a paper in a discussion board because you can't apply those things. But I do want you to cite in the discussion board any information you're using in APA format, and I want you to include at the end of your discussion posting a references section. 
The references section does not count toward the word requirement. I want to say that in full disclosure, uh, but I do expect if you utilize the work of others or you appeal to other sources, make sure that you cite those and reference those in your discussion assignments as well. So I'm excited to have each of you in Career and Faith, and I look forward to studying the integration of Career and Faith with you over the course of the next eight weeks. And once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and I will get back to you with an answer as soon as I possibly can. Have a fantastic week and God bless.